Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the track modifier tag, probably my favorite animation addition uh, to R25, though there are a couple others that are, are up there as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. So here we have just a basic setup, just some cubes animated on the Y position. And uh, what the track modifier tag is gonna allow us to do is add additional animation on top of this and modify uh, our current animation in a very procedural like way. What we can do is right click and go to animation tags and choose our track modifier tag to apply uh, this tag to all of our objects. Now the way um, it works if you add the tag this way uh, is that it will be applied to every animated property on this object. In this case, that's just the Y position, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, I do want to point out, though, that if you just wanted to apply it to a single property or a selection of properties, you could select them down here, right-click, go to the Animation tab, and choose Add Track Modifier Tag. And all that's doing is switching the mode to Include and adding the Y position property in here. So it is something you can do manually, but it's nice that we can add it that way um, ourselves if there's just a single uh, property we want to add it to or a selection of properties. So I'll just go and add it back uh, the normal way. Uh, in the first mode here, we have a spring, and this spring is very much like the delay effector or field spring, uh, or it's almost like the jiggle deformer if uh, you don't add a field or, or mess with the strength at all. So what I can do here is actually turn the strength up to 100 and I'll start to see this go back and forth, get some of that nice springiness, some of that additional animation, uh, all with zero extra keyframes. We can control the stiffness of this, which allows us to have the springiness move higher or lower. And then lastly, we have drag, which determines how quickly this comes to a stop. So a lower drag is gonna let these bounce a little bit more before eventually stopping. Next up, we have posterization, uh, which is probably my favorite mode, uh, as we can do so many really cool things with this, um, aside from just posterization, which um, we'll get to. Uh, the first thing we can do is offset. So rather than come in here and offset animation, you can do that using this property here. And all I have to do is in each tag, tell this how many frames I want to offset. So if that one's five, I can make this one 10. This next one 15. 20, and lastly, 30. Okay, and now you can see we have some nice offset animation, all right? While all of our keyframes still look the exact same. Now, I have tried to add additional animation at the end at this point, um, and it can work. You just have to be very careful uh, because, you know, the values that uh, you see on your objects um, here are going to be reflective of what the track modifier tag is actually doing. So you can't just kind of keyframe them like you you might expect. Um, you could, however, do it a little bit easier in your timeline in F curve mode and setting keyframes in here, um, you know, by holding control, clicking and, and doing that type of thing. So uh, you can add extra animation. Um, but you, you almost have to do it in the timeline or disable your track modifier tags uh, in order to do so, so that uh, it doesn't take into account the, the offsetting or whatever else we're doing here. So offsetting, really, really like that. Um, huge for kind of keeping things procedural here. We also have time factor, which is similar to offset, but allows us to stretch out the length of our animation. Um, and so right now, 0% is gonna keep it at its initial length. I could set this to 100%, which essentially doubles it. So now, rather than only go to 30 frames, it's going to go to 60 frames. All right, and kind of just see that here. Uh, and you could vary the amount per tag to get something that looks very similar uh, to um, the offsetting we just saw previously. Now, we also have a strength here uh, to control how much of this posterization effect you want. Um, you know, for all these different options. And then lastly, we have the frame step, uh, which is really what posterization is all about. And it's essentially kind of changing the frame rate of our animation. Cinema 4D's uh, 
default frame rate is 30 frames per second. And uh, while we can change that, we can also get our animations to look different differently by working with this frames, frame step. So what ends up happening is as we turn this higher, uh, Cinema 4D will only play back the specific frames we mentioned here. So if our frame step is two, it will play back every other frame. And so things are gonna look a little bit less smooth. If I turn this up, it's gonna play back every third frame. So we've essentially cut the frame rate by a third. If I play back every fourth frame, we've now cut the frame rate in um, one fourth, okay? So we could turn this up, the higher we go, right, the, the more posterized uh, this will look. So a nice way to help break things up, maybe get a little bit of a different style, almost a uh, stop motion like with uh, the frame rate and what we can do with our animation like this. Uh, but that's really why posterization is my favorite, the offset and time factor, you know, being able to do that stuff essentially non-destructively, really, really important. We also have noise. Very similar to the vibrate tag or perhaps a random effector, uh, but here, you know, we can do this um, in uh, this particular tag without needing MoGraph or without needing the um, vibrate tag. And the problem with the vibrate tag is that it's kind of its own thing, whereas this adds it to um, addition on top of our existing animation. So I need to start by turning up the strength as well as turning up the speed. Now, when I hit play, you'll see I have a little bit of noise here. All right. And if we twirl this down, uh, you'll see we can control the strength uh, a little bit more granularly. We can control the strength of this noise on our position, on our rotation, as well as scale other animated attributes or even user data. Now, uh, you will only see this noise if that property is animated and if that property is added to your track modifier tag, which in this case, um, while I have added, the way I've added this is it's to everything, the only property I do have animated is my Y position. So that's why we're not seeing any of that noise on uh, these other options here. Now, uh, we also have scale, so you can make the noise pattern smaller or larger, okay? And you can even go above 100% here if you, you know, use your, your arrows and, and increase it that way. We also have a seed value. You may be going, well, this is great, but why are all your cubes uh, moving the exact uh, same way? And you can fix that by assigning each one of these a unique seed value. And I'm going to just cheat here by hitting num plus one which is going to add the number each of these cubes is, and you can kind of see what that number is. And then it's gonna add one to that. So it's gonna give each one a unique seed value. This one will be one, this one two, three, so on and so forth. But now each one has its own movement. This one also has an offset and time factor. It works very much the same way. So um, it's something you could also do in here. Lastly, we have smooth, which um, we really won't be able to see uh, a whole lot in with this particular example um, because the animation itself is pretty smooth. Uh, but if you have some animation that has some irregularities in the motion, uh, it will go through and help just kind of smooth it out just like the smooth mode in your delay effector or delay field. So uh, I like this uh, using this especially when it might save me some time having to go in and uh, get rid of any kind of noise or other irregularities in my keyframe. So that's a quick look at the delay, or not the delay, the uh, uh, track modifier tag. Hopefully you found it helpful. If there's anything else you would like to see a video about, please let me know and take care.